Hey, Robert Garrett here. So we've had our Tesla now for about two and a half, three months. And so I'm gonna tell you the five things that, that we've learned in our first three months of ownership. So let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about that I noticed as we've had the car is the debate between the car having more range versus there being more chargers. Range anxiety. And let me tell you, range anxiety is real. It's a real thing. Is it not, Everett? Yeah, it is. So as you can see from this tweet, as the number of fast charging superchargers has widened, so have sales. Yeah, I don't necessarily think the car needs more range. I just think there need to be more chargers. I wish there were just more of them so you never felt that anxiety to begin with. We did a road trip to Tulsa, Oklahoma the other day and we drove there and back in one day. So about a thousand miles in a single day, which is a lot of miles. And that constant range anxiety does exist. I mean, it, there is a range anxiety. Am I gonna make it to my next stop? Sometimes you catch yourself going way out of the way to charge just so that you don't run out of battery. And I don't necessarily think the car needs more range. I just think you need way more chargers, enough chargers that at any moment, you can look down and go, oh, I'm at 10%. Let me just pull off at a gas station and charge like you can with a gas car. Do you all agree? I yeah, totally sure. agree. Like we were, we had to go about what, 15 miles out of the way yeah. to Little Rock? Well, we were headed from the, from New Albany, Mississippi, all the way to Tulsa. And from one charger to the next, we would have arrived with like 4% charge. And it and was- That's just too uncomfortable. It's too uncomfortable. And it was our first trip. We didn't know if the, if the GPS was accurate. We didn't know what to do. And so we went about 30 miles actually out of the way to charge in Little Rock. And if there were just a few more chargers on the way, you wouldn't have had to worry about it. Currently we are in the car traveling to Tulsa, Oklahoma for our, our first really long Tesla road trip. So we'll keep you updated as the drive goes. All right, so let's put in the navigation to where we're going. So we are going to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Two supercharging stops on the way. Okay, it looks like we're gonna supercharge in Brinkley, Arkansas for 25, 35 minutes and Ozark, Arkansas for 25 minutes. So supercharging in two hours. All right guys, so it's first road trip and it's sleeting outside. We got caught in a snowstorm in Arkansas. Yep. So first Tesla road trip in the snow. A little nervous about it. Sarah's nervous, but. We're in the safest car in the world, mom. How can you be nervous? And Sarah is always a little nervous. Yeah, a little. So we're in Brinkley, Arkansas. You can see there's eight stalls and they're all 250 kilowatts, super fast charging. The chargers tapered down to 42 kilowatts. Um, so we're charging at the rate of about 192 miles an hour. The battery's at 82%, but it says here our next charge will arrive at 4% battery. So we're, we're letting it go. It says we've got about 10 more minutes of charging before we can continue our trip. Alrighty, so we're at the next supercharger in Ozark, Ozark, um, Arkansas, and plugging them in. Come on, plug up. There we go. We'll make sure it turns green. And we're charging. So Everett had watched a ton of YouTube videos and he had learned a lot about how to charge. You had watched out of spec reviews, I think, where, you know, run the battery down all the way and then charge. And so kind of what are some of your thoughts now that you've had the car? Um, for sure. I think they do need to add more chargers because like, I feel like you should be able to, you know, have the comfort of taking an exit knowing there's going to be a charger there because it's the same with a gas powered, you know, you know, so you have like 30 miles left, you just take an exit and you go fill up. I feel like that needs to be the same with charging. And one of the things I didn't know that I know now is that the car charges from zero to 50 super fast. It really does. I mean, here we are at a supercharger in Tupelo, Mississippi, okay? And the car will go from zero to 50 in like five to 10 minutes, but from 50 to 100 takes like 30 minutes. And so it's not that you need more range, you just need more chargers so you could run the car to 10%, charge to 50 in like five minutes and keep going with your trip. 
So I, the proliferation of a large number of chargers is really important to wide adoption, I think, of electric vehicles. And again, I didn't buy the car because it was electric. I bought it because I wanted autopilot and full self-driving. The electric is a benefit and I'm really excited about the electric piece, but I, I want getting more chargers is gonna be a big part of adopting, of more people adopting it. You gotta think, the average American You've got early adopters, like 6% of the population are early adopters of any tech. And then like 6% are innovators. So like 12% of the population are going to, they're going to adopt this technology and then they're going to endure the hardship of what it takes to have it. So they'll go out of the way to charge. They'll do all those things. If this is going to get wide scale, and remember this, the last number I saw, only about 3% of vehicles on the road are EVs. So that's a tiny three out of a hundred. And so when you get into wide scale adoption, people don't want to have to like change their lifestyle, learn a ton of stuff from YouTube just so they can have this electric car. Sarah, I think you'd fit into that camp, wouldn't you? Definitely. Like I would not myself personally own this vehicle until I knew that if I was in a jam, I could just pull off and fuel up or in this case, charge up. Right. And so I think that I've seen on Twitter a lot of people who say stuff like, oh, there's plenty of chargers, don't need more chargers. And I think they're messing up when they say that. These are probably Tesla owners who have watched every YouTube video and done all the traveling and they have their routine and they have their home charger. But if you want wide adoption, I think you've got to make this so easy for the consumer. Mega easy. So many chargers that they never worry about um, range anxiety. And I just don't know that we want to spend the amount of resources it takes to get a car to five and 600 miles of range when we can just put more chargers out there. I, I have a friend and he always says he wants a five or 600 mile range car, but my bladder can't survive five <laughs> and 600 miles. I mean, really about three hours in the car, I'm stopping anyway. Yeah. And I would say like my favorite superchargers to stop at were the ones that were at the gas station themselves. So you know, because you could go use the restroom, you could get a snack, you know, and then hop back in and you're ready to go. Yeah, you know, that's one thing that surprises me. I can't believe there's not some gas station out there that hasn't uh, partnered with Tesla to put a supercharger at like a national gas station to put their a supercharger at every gas station. They've already got the bathroom infrastructure, the snack infrastructure. And like Sarah said, some of our favorite chargers are the ones that are at gas stations that already exist. And I believe Tesla's website, last time I looked, they have a way for businesses to apply to be Tesla charging stations. Right. So you can go on Google and literally search host a Tesla supercharger and they have an application where you can, as you scroll through, it shows some of the business benefits of having a supercharger on your property. And then it has a form for you to fill out to apply for one and they'll contact you. You have to be a property owner, obviously, but if you own a coffee shop or something, it'd be a no brainer. Or a grocery store. I've seen several charging stations at like really nice grocery stores. And I mean, they're, they're awesome. And I it, automatically, I go to thinking about our town. I'm like, oh, we could have a charging station at this place or this coffee shop and how nice and convenient it would be. So real quick, this video is brought to you by the awesome ladies at Southern Cotton Company. Uh, they make some awesome ladies apparel and every once in a while a men's sweatshirt like the one I'm wearing. So the second topic we're gonna talk about is autopilot and full self-drive. Yeah, so I would say autopilot is the main reason I bought the car. Um, what other car can you think of that literally going down the freeway, you can take your hands off the steering wheel and not worry at all? Um, one of my reflections on autopilot is it truly is good. I mean, it, it's as good as it comes. I feel completely safe whenever it's in autopilot. I don't feel like I have to babysit the car. Right now we're going 80 miles an hour down the road. I got my eyes forward. Every once in a while it prompts me to touch the steering wheel. I'm not touching the gas, I'm not touching the brake. It's super safe, I think. Check out how easy autopilot is to engage. So the stock right here, I'm just gonna double tap down on it. And now you can see we're in autopilot. 
the car won't go faster than 80 miles an hour. You can see the blue steering wheels lit up. The lane is marked, and then check this out. If I wanna switch lanes on the stock right here, I'm just gonna press the blinker up, and you'll see on the screen, it makes a prediction to, predict, to change the lane, and it did it without me touching it. So I'm gonna show you the lane change again so you can kind of see it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch the stock down to turn on the blinker, and look, everything else it handles on its own. It makes the lane change all by itself. Sarah, what do you think? Yeah, I think that at some point, every driver is kind of a distracted driver, whether you get a text message or, you know, you just, sometimes I will be driving and I'll just not even remember where I'm going. Um, and I feel like this is just another safety measure. Yeah, I can't imagine in the future, every car not having this. I mean, you think about it, there's eight cameras on the car. It can see it front, sideways, and behind. It's never distracted. It never gets drunk. It never gets tired. I mean, literally, it is super safe. One thing I enjoy about the autopilot, it's, I mean, like, it's just as good as a human driving. Like, it's just so smooth, and it really, you really do get a great experience while riding. Yeah, I think it's interesting what Everett just brought up. So we've been talking autopilot. Now we're going to talk full self-driving. So autopilot's like on the freeway. Oh look, there's a Model Y right there yeah. in front of us. So autopilot's like driving on the freeway only, okay? Exit to exit, entering the exit and exiting the exit. So the whole time you're on the freeway, the majority of the time you're driving in a car, it's on the freeway, I would say. Um, that's autopilot and it's perfect. You can see everything thinks yeah. it's perfect, doesn't you? Yeah. Now, when you get into full self-driving, which is off the freeway, that's not perfect. Oh God. <laughs> That's why it's beta. <laughs> All That's right. Why you have uh, to, no, That's why take you us home. To, You're driving us home. Shut up. I'm That's why you have to pay attention. Now we've got full self-driving 10.8.1, uh, the beta installed, and it's truly a beta. It's not great. It's okay, but I like kind of having the newest stuff, right? I mean, you think about <laughs> cell phones, anything. I like having the newest stuff. He does. If so, it's new tech, he's. He's got it. No doubt. So let's talk a little bit about FSD. So Sarah, give us your impressions of full self-driving. Um, so my impression of full self-driving is you've got to stay aware. Like when you're in just autopilot, you can check your email. I mean, you don't have you to. You shouldn't. I mean, it's yeah, not. You so, yeah. shouldn't. But, <laughs> but, but the reality is you can you say can. Okay, so yeah, let me preface that by saying you shouldn't, but you could. Um, full self-driving is you have to stay very engaged because it will just like ghost break for no reason. It might try to like veer off into another lane for no apparent reason. You've got to be ready. <laughs> yeah, I mean, FSD can be scary. Everett. Tell us what you think about FSD. Oh man, it's the best. Oh no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's very much beta. Like, it'll, for no good reason, go to the turn lane, even though you didn't tell it to. So, I mean, like, I think it's got some ways to go, but I think, like, it is totally better than nothing. I'm not gonna touch it. Let's see what it does. Put on the blinker on its oh. own. Making the ride no. on its own. Right. Now it's getting in the correct lane. Oh, is it? Wow, yes, absolutely it is. It's kind of new. Look, oh, yeah, it's in. Look. It's in Autopilot creeping forward, checking for visibility. It sees it's clear. Let's see when it goes. It decided to go on its own. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. And you have yet to touch I haven't touched around. anything. So Everett, Everett is like, he's kind of a fancy guy and <laughs> he likes comfort um he doesn't want to ever feel even the slightest bit of discomfort and what i would say is full self-driving does not drive as well as a human would you agree with that ever yeah for sure and so whenever it got, gets in the car i mean the first few times he did he rode in the car in full self-driving he's like i'm out take me home right yeah why did you feel that way because like it just like it's real jerky and like you know I want it to be like smooth like as good as a human's driving it 
which is like because I kind of got spoiled by like the autopilot and how good it was so like I had really high hopes for the full self-driving so yeah um, your expectations yeah, were like high. it was gonna be yeah. just like because it says full self-driving you think like oh crap this is gonna be good you know like it's gonna drive me I just put in the address and it'll take me there yeah and someday I think it'll get there yeah. right do I think there's a day where you'll be able to put uh, let's say uh, a destination six hours away in the in the GPS go to sleep and wake up and you're there absolutely I think we'll get there is it there no FSD right now is like a 13 year old learning to drive if you're the parent That's a great way to put it yeah, yeah if you're a parent in the passenger seat you're scared to death the whole time yeah you're like oh my gosh yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that, but that's what it is it's a kid learning to drive now I don't think it'll be that way forever but that's what it is right now like they said it is much scarier in full self-driving now do i think that it's so scary that we shouldn't allow it on the roads no a, an attentive driver can ride in full self-driving i've done many many miles in full self-driving and i've even put some youtube videos out there in fsd and it's plenty safe you just have to pay attention i mean probably 90 percent of the time you don't but there's that one percent of time that it'll mess up so i love that they're allowing it in the states I don't think they need to remove it or anything, but I do think you have to pay much better attention than you do when you're an autopilot. So I was just studying the full self-driving computer graphics. And Sarah, what did you say? I said, is this like a satellite image or something? And Everett said, what? No, mom, we don't have a drone hovering on top of us. <laughs> <laughs> it looked very aerial. Well, it is pretty amazing that from the eight cameras on the car, it produces this unbelievable image. Would you agree? Yes, but I mean, you got to show them the image because they won't know what I'm talking about. It's such a good image. So you can see we're in the Chick-fil-A parking lot, right? But check out the imagery on this thing. So you got all these cars right here. And then you've got the map produces such a detailed shot of all of them. I mean, the graphics here with the full self-driving beta 10.8, or really full self-driving beta period, regardless of Virgin, does such a good job. And so look, you can look see- Look at the little people. Yeah, yeah. So you got right here, you can see it shows a human and that's the person right there who's taking the order. And it shows them on the screen at the car so you can see, look, it's got a person over here who, who's at the gas station behind us. No, I'm sorry, they're at the trash can right there. You can see they're putting trash in the trash can and the computer is able to produce their image. Also, the person right here standing at the car taking the order, it's pretty cool. So Elon Musk, if you're out there, Sarah has so much faith in you that she thinks you're producing satellite imagery for our car, each individual car. Well, why not? <laughs> As we're recording this video, you can see in our rearview mirror, it looks like a Model Y headed to charge also. So the third thing I want to talk to you about as a new owner is the battery. I was always worried the battery would decrease in capacity and that over time I'd have to replace it. You know, I thought, what if I get 100,000 or 200,000 miles on the car and then I got to swap the battery out? As you know, battery swap outs are expensive. So a few of the habits that I, I've gotten is first, I only supercharge on trips. I don't supercharge if I'm not on a trip. Second, I bought a, a NEMA 1450 adapter at the house and I, it'll do about 32 miles an hour, 50 amp at my house, which is plenty. If I get in at 10 o'clock at night, with say 5% range and I and I plug it in, the next day when I'm ready to leave, it'll be fully charged if I need it. The third thing I do is I only charge my the car to about 65% for daily driving. There's no reason to go beyond that. I mean, I'd have to really be driving a good bit to go beyond that. Now, let's say the next day I'm gonna do a trip. I'll generally charge it to about 85. And then when I wake up that morning, I'll set it to, to 95 or beyond but I'm getting in the car immediately and driving it. And so what I've read is that the, that the battery does not decrease as much if you don't let it just sit at a full state of charge. Number four in the video is the environmental impact of the car with it being electric. And so it's, it's better for the environment, it really is. 
And one of the things I hear people say is, well, you're just moving the environmental carbon impact from your, the, your tailpipe, because with this car, when you drive down the road, there are no tailpipe emissions. And I've had people say, but you're, now you're just taking that and putting it at the power plant, which may be coal powered. And that is true. So two points there. First, the car's more efficient. The battery, the, <clears throat> it, ho it takes less energy to go the same distance in an electric car. The second piece of that is eventually I'm gonna put solar panels on my house and then the sun will charge the car and then I'll drive. So there will be no coal power. There will be no uh, environmental, negative environmental impact of the car. So ultimately it is more environment, environmentally sound. So the fifth and final thing I wanna do in this video is recommend to you some other YouTube channels so that if you buy one of these, you can learn about it like I have. So Everett, what would you say the first one is? First one is a What's Inside family. So they do like a bunch of like, they used to start off with like What's Inside. And they would cut stuff open yeah. and let you see what was inside. And it. then like they've transitioned to more of like a Tesla, all about Tesla channel. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, so the second one is a kind of a small one, very few subscribers, but a very good channel. Slow Asian Driver. It's kind of a funny name but uh, it's a great YouTube channel. He does a road trip. He talks to you about the full self driving. So I love that one, Slow Asian Driver. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about Out of Spec Motoring. He does a great job, like just about any road trip, like he'll go to CES. He'll just about do anything and just take us through the ride. Yeah, I love uh, Out of Spec. He, I mean, literally he's doing uh, road trip after road trip in Teslas and other electric vehicles. And you get to see his experience charging and frustrations sometimes, and then also other good, good moments along the way. So he's a great one. Um, the fourth one that I'd like to tell you about is uh, Electrified Garage. So this is a group of guys that used to be Tesla uh, maintenance guys or worked like in a Tesla dealership, service dealership and they show you how to do a ton of things fi fixing the car. They are just unbelievable. They show you how to swap out the battery. Anything you might need to do to the car, they've got videos on it. It is outstanding. And then the last YouTube channel I wanna recommend to you is? Chuck Cook. Yeah, Chuck Cook's awesome. He does a ton of full self-driving videos. And one of the things he's kind of famous for are unprotected left turns. I'll be honest, when I got the car, I didn't even know what an unprotected left turn was. And he sets a drone up and he's showing himself making unprotected lefts. And it's really the car making those unprotected lefts. But follow him on YouTube, follow him on Twitter, also a good follow. 